Crushing Brevard. I'm Chris Spears, owner of Indie Rich Digital Advertising here in Melbourne. And today my guest is Spectrum 13 news anchor, Greg Pallone. Hey. So, Greg, you're from uh, the Atlanta area. That's right. You've been in Brevard some time. You've been in broadcast media almost your entire career. So why don't you walk us through growing up in the Atlanta area and the climate back in the day, what your influences and inspirations were? Well, uh, I grew up in Marietta, Georgia, uh, technically East Cobb County, uh, now the home of the Atlanta Braves. Uh, they're not downtown anymore, so the stadium's right there in that area. Uh, went to, you know, all, all through school growing up there. Uh, we actually moved there when I was three. I was born in Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, my dad was in textiles. So uh, they decided, his company decided to expand to Atlanta, and he was the guy to go to the expansion. So it was about three, my brother and sister, um, both uh, older than me. We all packed up and, and moved to uh, the Atlanta area, Marietta. And he started that, uh, you know, that division. And then not too long after that, they said, well, this isn't working. So unfortunately for him, he lost his job, but then he got on his feet uh, and again, and, and sold steel for the rest of his career before he retired. And we stayed in the area, of course. Uh, my brother and sister still in, a, in, the, uh, in the Atlanta area as well. Uh, I decided uh, to, because of my job, uh, to, to move around. I uh, moved all around the southeast and uh, landed here in, uh, in the Melbourne area of Brevard County uh, working as the, uh, the bureau reporter for Spectrum News 13. Been doing it since 2007. Awesome. So I, uh, you intimated to me that you uh, started kind of behind the scenes? Yeah, and my then major was your way on camera. Yeah, my major was actually uh, at Georgia Southern University near Savannah. It was actually broadcast production. They did not actually have a broadcasting um, major at the time. So it was basically learning behind the scenes. Uh, we learned how to direct, how to produce, you know, produce everything, um, being on the floor with the cameras, the studio, and all that. So it was it was more studio centric. Um, we did take a, a camera and we did do like commercials and, and did commercial production. Um, and that, but I did take a, a couple of journalism classes, um, but that's really not what me got me into what I was doing. I always thought that I might be behind the scenes, um, but uh, my my goal uh, growing up as a Braves fan was eventually to become a Braves announcer, and uh, that is a tough, tough task. There's a million kids that want to well, do that. Well, there's a million, yeah. and once those guys get in there, they're basically in there until they retire. Your Harry Carries, 40, 50 The Harry Carry, the Skip Carries, you know, that family. Uh, you know, once they get in that spot, that's the, like the primo spot. So I realized that, well, maybe I'll do sports or something like that. And I, uh, I ended up doing an internship at a local cable station uh, in Statesboro, Georgia, which is where Georgia Southern is, and kind of fell into news. I never watched news when I was growing up. I never really was interested in it. But once I realized that I would be interacting with people and able to tell their stories, it just it, it was so appealing and gratifying to be able to do that. And almost 30 years later, I'm still doing it. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. So. Uh we've touched briefly i was in savannah georgia a mm -hmm. few weeks ago you told me that you were there for work for some time yeah i worked there uh, two different stints um, my first jobs were in savannah uh, at the abc uh, abc station and then later uh, after i moved around the southeast my goal was eventually to get back to atlanta i did i worked there for some time and uh, my old boss from my second station in uh, savannah the news director there um, got in touch with me and said hey i'm over at the abc station where you started um we have a main anchor position open uh i'd like for you to come and talk about it i'm like okay that sounds pretty good i was in my early 30s at the time and i said that'd be kind of nice let me be in the studio so i went down there and uh, i was a main anchor uh, for the abc fox station for a, a couple of years uh enjoyed it enjoyed being back in savannah as you know savannah beautiful town great place i uh, met my wife there uh, my future wife so that's uh, something that's a plus. But uh, once this opportunity came, uh, I was kind of itching to get out again. And once this opportunity came to, to work for News 13 in the Brevard County Space Coast Bureau uh, covering space shuttle launches, I saw that. I'm like, sign me up. Uh, yeah, I, I need something. You need to pay me so I can survive. You don't have to pay me. I'm kidding. But I'm just saying it was something that I, I just was, I never knew how much I would have a passion for space. I mean, I, yeah. I grew up like most liking either Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever it may be, but I never knew I'd have such a passion for space. And this is the 
at the center of space right here on the space coast it's just such a unique place to mm -hmm. live where yeah. if you're not keeping up on when the next launch is and you walk outside and, and there it it's is going across <laughs> you're the sky. like what's that rumble <laughs> i didn't get that in missouri so uh, with like the tech the yep. heavy aerospace mm -hmm. and now the space push uh, yep. this is just one of the most unique places to live in well, the country. so many people once the space shuttle it was announced that the space shuttle program was going to retire people were like greg what are you going to do are you going to have a job i go absolutely and the people who unfortunately were let go from the space shuttle program once commercial space started ramping up with spacex then a few years after that united launch alliance now we have blue origin we have all these commercial space companies the 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 future is brighter than it's ever been if you think about it back in the day uh, there may be one or two shuttle launches a year how many launches are we having now we've had five almost, to ten we've yeah. had almost a hundred so yeah. far this year they're looking at potentially having 300 launches a year so that's you're getting close to almost one a day staggering numbers it is it, and and that what the, does that mean that means not just the cool aspect of, of launching rockets but it means jobs it means feeding billions the economy. into the local and, yeah and you have private companies that are doing this so they're doing it it's, it's a vested interest for not just them but their their investors their board members you know the customers that they say they serve because they're they're providing that service launching a satellite up or whatever it may be they're providing that service so it's all cyclical and, and all good for the economy yeah it's one thing when a company moves to an area or an industry and creates a ton of hourly jobs yes but creating ten thousand six-figure jobs is yes. going to have a tremendous economical impact and that's what they said i mean with the space shuttle program between nasa and all the contractors that worked on that you're talking upwards of and if you go way back to the apollo program too you're talking fifteen thousand twenty thousand jobs all that once the shuttle retired they knew that they weren't going to get them all back at once it would be 200 here it'd be maybe 50 maybe 500 here just depending on who was doing what and how they were going to be working in the commercial space sector so it's slowly gotten back it'll never be that level again um, but you know the way it's going with all these different companies uh, they're not necessarily going to be launching like a spacex you know starship uh, they might be launching a, a smaller rocket with a smaller payload. So there are already launch pads that have been leased that haven't been used in decades out there. They're going to be in use. So it's you're, you're sort of spreading the wealth. It's not just NASA. It's all these commercial companies. And so here, here it is right here on a silver platter. Just a matter of people uh, taking hold of it. Yeah, and that trickles down to uh, you know, higher quality public schools, better roads, just all that tax everything, base. Everything. Like you're going to live in a very nice place. And, and I mean, think about living here. Uh, okay, there's a there's the ocean. You have the beach. You have the river. You have all these amenities that are here. And Golf's better city. in the summer than in the winter. Oh, right? Of course. Why do snowbirds yeah. come to Florida? Yeah. So you know that right there is a recruiting tool. And what a lot of these either uh, job outlets uh, or, or like Brevard Workforce or some of the local chambers, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get these you know young professionals in the tech sector, get them here and say, hey, you don't need to just get your start here. You can stay here because look at the lifestyle that you have. You don't need to just get your feet wet, get some experience and then move on. You can be here, build a career, build a family, everything, because you've got everything you need right here. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, was there a transition mentally from going behind the camera to in front of it? Was, were there nerves initially being oh, yeah. on air? And yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what I tell, um, I, I speak to a lot of uh, maybe middle schoolers or high schoolers for maybe career day. And what I tell them is, you know, if you, if you want to get into the broadcast uh, field, if you want to get into broadcast journalism, don't do it because you want to be on TV. Don't do it for that aspect. That will be a default. That will be, that will come. But what you want to do is you want to start in a small town, a small market and make your mistakes in front of a small audience get your feet wet that way. That way you can get comfortable. And in my experience, I've seen that there are two type of people, journalists who are like on air. They're either very comfortable on air, but they're not good yet with the facts, good with the writing, because it involves writing. It involves very specific uh, tight writing, you know, for broadcast journalism. Or you have those who have that, but they're just not seasoned on air yet. You know, it's very rare when you find that right off the top. So you have to find your, uh, find your style, find your rhythm. And what I decided to do is my first, my second job, 
I decided I wanted to be a photographer, a videographer, and I wanted to work with reporters so I could get their style and I could, I could be behind the scenes and learn how they do it and then develop my own. And at the time, uh, the station that I worked for in Savannah, uh, they expanded, so they added newscasts, so they needed the staff. So I applied uh, for a reporter position and got it. And that's where I got my start on air. But you make your mistakes in front of a small audience because eventually you're gonna be in front of millions of people potentially. Yeah. And, and you wanna be, you wanna be credible, you wanna be confident, um, but you also wanna be yourself. You know, you, you still wanna be objective, but it's still, need, it's still you. Absolutely. Because why do people watch? Because they, they like, why do people watch, uh, you know, Wheel of Fortune? They, they watch it for, you know, Pat Sajak. He's even retiring, but why is it so popular? Because they identify with them and they, they're, they just come into their home. You know, they come, they come into your home, it's like a member of the family, they trust you, um, and they respect you. And so that's what you want. But at the same time, you wanna make sure that you are objective and you give proper information, the right confirmed information, uh, so that people will trust you and that they get that and they can make a decision for themselves how they want to, you know, have the news delivered to them. Yeah, credibility is not built overnight. No, it's something you, <laughs> it takes it takes a long time to get that reputation. Yeah, and I've, I've had a lot of sales training over the year. Uh, Paul Tracy, I believe, the like iconic motivational sales guy, mm -hmm. says if you study something eight hours a day for five years, mm -hmm. you'll become a national expert in that field. Yeah. And I believe that. Yeah. And you know, you never know exactly when you cross over that point. You just wake up one day with a new set of skills and confidence to execute them in front of people. I, I don't think you you do once you got that over that hump. I don't remember exactly when I got over that hump. Um, you just wake up one day and it's, it's got a flow to it. Yeah, it becomes natural. It yeah. becomes second nature to you. It, you know, it's kind of like your heart, uh, it, it, your heart's beating. You're not thinking about it, it's involuntary. Once it becomes involuntary and you're just able to do it and to talk, that's when you know. And for me, I've been very fortunate uh, since I've been here for 16 years now, um, our, our station, uh, Charter and Spectrum, has allowed me to emcee um, uh, a lot of events, you know, for different nonprofits or whatever it may be, and I'm able to interact with the people in the community and really become a part of the community. Um, and people know that, so they continue to say, "Hey, would you like to come and emcee our event again?" It was very successful. Um, people enjoyed you. You did a good job. But at the same time, they know that we're here. We have a presence. Spectrum News 13 has a presence here in Brevard County. Yeah, you're not an ad agency. You're really yeah. there to integrate with the community and provide and, a service. And we live here. We yeah. live here. We're, we're, we're not just coming in for the day. We live here. You'll run into, you know, run into somebody at the grocery store or whatever it may be. And, and we, we love this community, you know. And so we have a vested interest, too, to make sure we're represented with our coverage, make sure we do it right, tell the stories uh, of this area that, that people need to know, not just here, it could impact somebody even nationally. I mean, we have more than 30 spectrum stations around the country right now uh, that can take our coverage, whether it's a big launch or whatever it may be, and we're continuing to do that, um, which is, is amazing to me because space is not just something that a few people are interested in, people are interested all over the world. So if it's happening here and we're able to provide that coverage and people are able to see that, then that puts us in a position to be the go-to, to be the go-to place um, where people can, can get their space news uh, here. And for me, I mean, it's a local story. It's a local story, but it has national and international implications and can go all over the world. And the quality, the production quality yes. is there. Because uh, when we moved here, like that was the option. So yeah, when I met you at Camp Holly, yep. uh, amongst a group of some uh, mutual friends, yes. I'm like, I think I know that guy from somewhere, <laughs> you know? And it's like, well, you know, I, uh, you I, were my news source. We didn't yeah. really, the basic cable package yeah. comes with you yeah. on it. So I'm like, well, and that, that's there we the, go. That's the advantage. Uh, that's the advantage that we have. Um, we're also a 24-hour station, so... Uh, we can deliver anything that we feel we need to air at any given time to make sure it's timely, make sure that our, our uh, viewers, and if you want to say the website too, or readers or whatever it may be, that they are informed. They're informed as soon as possible that if something is going on, we need to let them know so that they can make a, a decision for themselves, whether it's weather, uh, whether it's something else. They, they need to know that information. We're able to deliver that as, as quickly as anybody. Absolutely. So uh, when there's breaking news, mm -hmm. say you're at home or you're at the office, you're working mm -hmm. and a big event's happening. Yes. 
what what's that like? Is it a scramble to it, you it, know, we, provide that coverage? It, it really it's a it's a case by case basis. Um, it really just depends on where we are, what we're working on, what time it's happening. Um, you know, it, it could be the middle of the day and, and something that we hear about. Whether I mean, it could be a crime scene or it could be a house fire or something. I know or, that fireworks incident was oh, yeah. a really that big was, incident. That was like, one you jump on right away. I had people mm-hmm. from Missouri calling me. It's like, is that by you? Yeah. I saw it's in Melbourne. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. And a uh, matter of fact, uh, I happened to be off that that day. Um, and, and that's in your neighborhood, right? It's it's just 10 minutes away. Okay. Yeah. West Melbourne. So it's not far. Um, I, my wife, my wife's the most patient person I know because she knows if I hear about something, I'm going to gonna at least try to get some information about it or go or whatever it may be no matter the circumstance if i'm able uh, i actually you know we drove over there uh she went with me i was off that day but we drove over there and and we were able to at least get some real-time information back to our our crew that was going to be responding to it and uh, they were able to cover it um, and get that done by the way that was a, a fireworks store where a car had crashed into uh, the fireworks store on uh, on 192 in West Melbourne. Unfortunately, the driver had an episode and passed away, but the explosion had all the fireworks just going everywhere. It was it was almost like a movie. It was it was very surreal. Yeah, I mean that was on CNN and national everything. Right. You know, so that was interesting. And the, the one thing that you mentioned though, if it does go national, every story though starts local. Oh, absolutely. No matter where you are. Yeah. No matter if you're in Washington D.C., you're in New York, or where, or here, every story starts local, and then has the potential to go from there. That's what I love about local news. I mean, I my goal once I kind of get into my career a little, little bit was to be maybe like a regional reporter for one of the networks and cover maybe the southeast. But once I really I, I fell in love with local news because you're face to face, and you're you're also you're seeing people on a consistent basis, and that, that goes back to the trust. You're not just coming in for the day or the week or whatever. You're there every day. And regional, you're not part of a community. I mean, you're not part of, True. you know, Georgia, South Carolina, right. Florida. That's too big of an area to be really committed to one place. For me, it's reassuring to live and work in the same community. It's reassuring because people... Like police and fire, you know, and, and, and part of the community. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. And uh, even if you're... You know, let's say you're a delivery truck driver. You deliver in the same area. People see you. They get to know you. You know, whatever it may be. Your mailman. You know, just things like that. And I, I consider, you know, kind of like your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. You know, yeah. I, I consider myself like a neighborhood type person, and that's that's what I do for a living. And I'm able to be part of the community too, not just someone who comes in and talks about it. I can be part of it too, and that's important. Absolutely. I mean, back in the day, you know, coming up in sales, I sold cars for a number of years. Mm-hmm. And I think I really cut my sales skills on that because that's a uh, don't sell, don't eat in the car business. True, so your motivation true. is right there. Yeah, absolutely. And I was pretty successful at it. But selling in a kind of a tight knit community, I'd be at the grocery store and see a family I sold a car to three months ago. Yeah. And they're still glowing and pointing yeah. at the car and saying hi to me. And the kids are like, we love the car, mister. And it's like, yeah, well, that's cool. You know, like I'm you, providing you, a service in the community. You weren't just selling the car, you were selling yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and just and the, yeah. the family dealership. It wasn't yeah. a conglomerate mm-hmm. like CarMax. It was a very it local, makes, been there since the 50s car dealership. It makes a big difference yeah. because they've been in the community. They're part of the community, you know. Yeah, so was a, I think at a young age, I was in my 20s at that point. I, I finally got that sense of uh, livelihood and community at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I feel... Uh, the same thing continues with my marketing business. Yeah. Like yeah. if I can uh, give you 25 times return on your investment, well, that's going to change your business life, your personal life, your children's life, mm-hmm. you know, better vacations, bigger house, whatever it is, you know, college, Yeah. you know, whatever the family goals are. And I'm a part of that. So, yeah. And I mean, people trust you. They, they trust that you're going to do uh, the, the best for them in their situation. It's just like when I tell someone's story, I mean, we, our goal is to personalize as many, if not every story that we can. That way people can relate. You know, some people might be able to, to understand where they're coming from and, and the issues that maybe a family is having or whatever it may be. And, and they say, oh, gosh, we've been through that, too. And then, OK, well, how can we help them? And it's just those type of things. I mean, right down the street from where we are uh, is the South Brevard uh, Sharing Center. 
and uh, it, it all it provides uh, you know clothing for you know families who, who need it. Uh, it has a food pantry and this is a few years ago and I, I was driving by and I saw their sign it said please help our shelves are bare and I'm like oh gosh okay so what do we do so I knew the director and we went and uh, we did a story with them the next day people donated the shelves were full after seeing that story and that's when you know it's t this is tangible this works it works and when when you can provide um, this like a, a, a an outlet to the masses and be able to get this information out look at what happens and uh, i was very fortunate they they honored us uh, for doing the story at one of their banquets um and everything it was just it made it just it makes you feel good that your work is it, you can see the results you can see who it's helping and how it's helping and yeah it stays here in the community too and speaking of community, I guess we can kind of wrap it up. I'll ask another question and anything you want to close with. Sure. But uh, Spectrum's a big employer yes. in this area. What would you uh, advise a recent grad or somebody graduating next year to explore at Spectrum? Are there just a myriad of just all kinds of positions in various departments? Well, when you first start out in, in, in broadcast journalism, uh, if you, you usually see who... Uh, has the I guess wherewithal in, in the first couple of years because it is a job it is work it's, it's not just somebody going and putting makeup on your face and and you just talk it, it's work it's something you have to know your stuff you have to research you have to make contacts there's a lot of different things uh, what I would recommend for someone who's uh, uh, you know a recent grad or about to grad as I mentioned before go in and get your experience in a, in a smaller town in a smaller market because you can't just say, hey, um, I want to do sports and I'm going to do it in New York. It doesn't work that way. It's like anything. You have to build your resume. You have to build your reputation. You're going you to cover the, the Durham experience. Bulls first. You got to cover <laughs> the minor play. leagues before you get to the major a, leagues. Yeah. yeah, even further down. Right. Um, single but, A. Single A. But yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's the same in, in a lot of different things. I mean, if, you're, if you want to be a police officer or a firefighter, you're not going to go to the big city yet. You need to get your experience in the smaller market. And again, I, I can't reiterate enough, make your mistakes in front of a smaller audience because it will be, that's when you know whether you're gonna be able to do this or not. Um, you don't wanna make that commitment and don't, don't have, I mean, you can have dreams and you can have aspirations, but understand um, that there are, there are people just like you who want the same positions. So you need to make yourself uh, marketable. You need to make yourself, um, you know, what they're looking for. Yeah, you know, in that mold. Every every different outlet has its own sort of style, its own way of doing things, and you need to be able to fit into that. Bring your own style, but at the same time maintain uh, that it's a brand. Maintain. Yeah, that Greg brand Maddox mold. wasn't Greg Maddox when he was eighteen. It took a no, second. No, yeah, look no. at look at his record in his early years. I mean, yeah. he was losing ball games after Drew Brees and, and, until he yeah. got Sean Payton as a coach in New Orleans. One kind of five hundred in San Diego. So yeah. even the best from where they ever came from. At the big leagues, yeah. you start over at the bottom rung. Absolutely. Yeah, no. Michael so. Jordan was cut from his. Uh, <laughs> Saw that. He was cut from his. Uh, was oh, it no, high league? school. His high school team. Yeah, the coach said stick to baseball. Yeah. yeah. And look, so that's another thing, too. Um, if someone's going to tell you no and you're driven enough and you think you have what's what it takes, don't let that stop you. And uh, I, I think that's pretty good advice for anything you want to do. I would agree with that. Yep. You know, turn those negatives into a positive. Sure. Because uh, I'm fueled by insults and ugly things from my past that yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to prove you wrong. <laughs> and you know what? That's a, that's good motivation. Absolutely. That's a very good motivation. So. Anything to close with, sir? No, just uh, I just appreciate um, I appreciate Spectrum. I, I uh, appreciate my uh, my managers at, at News 13. Um, they know how passionate myself and the my coworker who work out here in Brevard County, they know how passionate that we are for our beat, for Brevard County, for space. Um, and they allow us to, to cover this beat and to make sure that we represent this area well. And that's, that's what I love about where I work. And that's why I'm fortunate to have worked with them uh, for, since 2007. So it's been a long time. I hope to remain for years to come because in my opinion, I think I, I have one of the best positions, uh, not just at my particular outlet or station, I think really in, in the world. 
because of everything that this area offers, everything that we're allowed to, to cover, whatever it may be, and of course space, which impacts so many. And uh, we're, on, we're on the dawn of a new era and we're right here for it with a front row seat. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Oh, well spoken, well said. Thanks, sir. Well, and speaking of pro versus amateur, I appreciate you coming <laughs> on my YouTube channel to discuss Spectrum with me you and got your it, career. Chris. Enjoyed it. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, Greg. Uh -huh. Take care.